Welcome back to another episode, you beauties. I'm Zach, as always, joined by Preston. We have a very fun episode for you guys. There is some news to talk about because it seems like every single goaltender is getting signed with the 8.25 Yeah, it AAB. seems to be the new gold standard going forward for elite goalies in the league. There were some Islanders fans online that were getting mad because people called it the Swayman deal when the Islanders signed the eight-year by 8.25, but Sorokin was the first goaltender to sign the 8.825. <laughs> that was like two years ago, though. And I, it was just coming off like a Vesna trophy like nomination. So that was a steal at the time. Sorokin did have a good game last week, though. Um, his Actually, he went one-on-one. Um, anyways, that's besides the point. I will say, though, all these goalies are getting 8 by 8.25s or 4 by 8.25s which is Sorokin's asking for 12.5. Yeah, I mean, Shesterkin, I, 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 honestly, now I think you're know, seeing, you know, Swayman and Ottinger, you know, get these contracts, which I think are good values for both of the players. You know, Jake Ottinger has been amazing to start the year. Yeah. I mean, the whole Dallas Stars team has been really great to start the year. Couldn't ask for really much of a better start for Dallas. But, you know, if that's the, the going rate for, you know, because I would say, you know, Swayman right now is like, I think, borderline elite. I think he needs to play a little bit more, like, I need to see more of him as a full-time starter in Boston before I put him in that elite category. Ottinger, when he's on his game, he's elite. I mean, he's having an elite start this season. Yes, like if he could play like this all year, he'll win, he'll he'll be a, fi- a Vesna finalist. He might win the damn. Yeah, thing, he might. To be honest yeah, with you, I mean him. You know, Colin Hellebuck's been really great to start the year again. I will say. They're setting the goalie market up. Um, Swayman, Allmark, and Ottinger are resetting the goalie market. Well, I'd say those are both team friendly. As Ottinger's is very team friendly. Oh, they're so team friendly. Eight the next eight years for what a twenty five year old goaltender. Yeah, twenty five year old goaltender. He's gonna it's gonna be up when he's thirty three years yeah, old. Yeah, Dallas doesn't have to worry about a goalie. Tyron, for not eight even. It'll be up thirty four years because he he doesn't kick in until next season. Yeah, I know. They got some younger players. that are gonna get some. Nice pay raises like Wyatt and Johnston and Stank Golden keeps playing. Jason like Robertson's like, Jason Robertson's going to need a nice contract coming off that bridge deal. So that's a very team friendly deal for all. Jim Nill has done a great job with all these contracts so far. And Jake Ottinger to through three games is three and zero with one shutout, a one point six three goes against and a nine forty eight save percentage. No, that's been, disgusting. He's been incredible for them. I will say, if I'm Shesterkin, at the, I, I don't mean to keep bringing it back to Shesterkin because we talked about him last week, but I will say that. If I'm just circling, I get you're the best goaltender in the league by far. You feel like you're the best player on your team, and Panera's making 11.6 right now. But take, I would take like 10, 10 and yeah, a half I at mean, this you, point. You're because right. Like, like these make- contracts kind of changed my viewpoint on that because, you know, I thought the Swayman contract was good, but to see Ottinger take money like that, which I think he, maybe if he waits till the end of the season, he could probably get maybe $9, $10 million if he has a great season like he's already having. You know, Shesterkin might be the best goalie in the NHL right now. You know, he's certainly up for debate for that. But I, I don't know how much longer the Rangers can stay super competitive if he does take twelve and a half million a year. It's not going to be good for the Rangers if he takes twelve and a half. I mean, the Listen, Rangers, if that if it comes down to that's all he's willing to sign for, they have to bite the bullet and do it. Do you though? Like, if you're Drury, well, if you're Chris and, Drury, if you don't sign him, you you're fired. Well, I know. I like if you're the owner, you have to put the pressure on Drury. But, but. like, if the owner goes to Drury and like they're having a stalemate with contract talks, and like, I, this needs to get done, or you're done. You're you're out of here, you know. The, Drury is going to have to make some concessions and give you know, Shesterkin what he wants. I will say I am excited about the Dallas Stars' future because they're one of the youngest teams in the league. They have they're everybody built lo- so well. Jim Nill might be the best, it, one of the best, if not the best, GM in the league. They rebuilt the team in like a year and a half, two years between between the, like 2019 and like half of 2020. They have a really really great mix of. Good veteran players that are still very productive. Like, you know, Tyler Sagan, Jamie Ben, Evgeny Dodonov has been awesome for them. Uh, Matt Duchesne, and a lot, they've been drafting really well. You know, Miro Heiskanen, Jason Robertson, Wyatt Johnston. Like, they have really great young players coming up the pipeline, and they have a really good mix of solid vets on good contracts that are still contributing at a high level. This is a, one of the best built teams in the league. Oh, it's so great. I love to see it. I love that this, what the Stars are building here, and the fact that you have a franchise goaltender locked up now is huge. Love this deal from both spies. Speaking of more goaltender news, we had the first goalie goal, and God only knows how long in the NHL. Philip Gustafson of the Minnesota Wild. Absolute Bardowski. Just kidding. He ripped like a 190-foot shot. <laughs> power play goal, empty netter to seal power the game. Play goal. I didn't know it was yeah, a power, it was a play, power goal. play goal. Look Pretty sick. He I has more say. power play goals than the entire Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> a goalie. 
Listen, we need him there on the right wing ripping one. Two, three, yeah. There's, more. Um, there's some goalies that was a pretty solid dude, shot. It's sick. This dude, he flung it in midair. It was like in slow-mo and then landed and it went in. It was so sick. And I, I just love seeing goalies get their goals. Like, I know it's only the 18th goalie goal in the NHL history, but it's you know, sick. He's got to bring that into contract negotiations. He's like, you know, I, I'm a good goalie and I score too. Listen, I don't care if I have a 500 save percentage. I have a fucking goal, buddy. Like, that's got to bring it up at least $10,000. Like, come on. <laughs> that would be wild if a goaltender ever like brought that up. And Listen, I have a goalie goal. <laughs> I want an extra 15K. <laughs> I mean, Patrick Waugh and like, those guys could probably include that. It's like, look, I can score too. Like, Patrick Wall, to be honest, Patrick Wall was doing spin moves at center ice stuff. <laughs> Deked out Wayne Gretzky at center ice and got a penalty for it. I love it how after that clip, he was just like complaining about it. I about mean, no, come on. Like, like let no him fun. have fun. Yeah. Let him have fun. <laughs> like, he just did a spin around on Wayne Gretzky at center ice. Like, come on. He's dude. about to go coast to coast from his own crease, deke out the greatest player of all time, and absolutely nip it. Yeah, no, though, that. I don't like that rule. I honestly think the goalie should be allowed to take it past center ice because it never happens. And no goalie's realistically ever going to do that. Listen, okay, if you take it past center ice, it should it should almost be like, well, if you take it past center ice, all right, well, the other team takes it, fires it down, it's the goalie. You're yeah, fault. you're, you're taking fault. that. That's you why nobody does write. it. <laughs> you know, Patrick Waugh is one of the only goalies that would be crazy enough to do that. And now it's a fucking penalty. I can see Fleury doing that still. Like, Fleury, could, I, I can see him like, doing something like that. It feels like Fleury that. would take in, like, his last game this season and decide to fuck around. Yeah, I can see Fleury <laughs> doing that. He's a fun goalie. <laughs> um, cool. All right, so a couple of teammates that Fleury played with for a while, Malkin and Crosby, both hit huge milestones. Yes. Of course, it was against the Buffalo Sabres, because why wouldn't it be? Crosby with the 1,600 point. Malkin was his 500th career goal. And it's crazy because that Malkin goal was actually kind of sick. I'm not going to lie. The Malkin's second opportunity. Malkin's been awesome to start He's the been season. great. 11 points through, what, the first five, six games yeah. that he's played so well, he's far. He's been really good. Crosby's been good as well. I think this Penguins team now, Tristan Jari has been complete ass. They have four more yeah, years of that five and a half million dollar yeah, contract. I don't However, think though, you can go forward with him as the starter. Bloomquist is phenomenal. And Nadelkovic is coming back too. They yes. just recalled him. So this this is where you're in a tough spot as the Penguins because you could ride with the Bloomquist and Nadelkovic tandem if Jari Honestly, wasn't making this so much money. If Bloomquist and you know Nadelkovic comes back and he you know he plays like he did last year at the end of the year, do you just bury Jari in the minors? Does he? <sighs> I mean, I mean you, no one would claim him off of waivers. I want to – I'm hold on. Jari um, – I don't even know where to – like, I know where to go. Okay, Puckpedia here. So, I'm looking at – where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Like, kind of similar to what, you know, Edmonton did with with uh Jack Campbell. Yeah. They just buried him in the minors. I mean, no one's going to claim that contract unless the team really needs a goalie. But, you know, at this point, I think Jari might be hurting the Penguins more than Jari he's is, them. Jari, he's not good. I'm sorry. He, he's – so if he went to the minors, he'd be making – he'd be 6.8 according to Puckpedia. His cap hit would be 5.3. Well, the cap hit doesn't go away. But no. It just – it would free up a roster spot for Pittsburgh to have someone, like, instead of having to carry three goalies. Like, if they don't trust him and he's not going to play, or maybe just you know, try to send a message and try to help him get his game back. So – if they were to buy out Tristan Jari, next season his cap hit would be 1.7, 26, 27, five million dollars, 27, 28, five million dollars, and then the other three years, 797. I, I, I don't see a buyout as a viable. No, option. I don't see, but it, it's fun to look at because I think you realistically can't buy out Jari until 27, 28. At I mean, he might be a, a goalie that. They might trade like a premium draft pick. For. I think you can trade Jari and throw in a draft pick, be like, take on the entire contract. Yeah, they do a team with like, a lot of cap space, and maybe the team just either eats the contract and he plays for them, or they buy the contract out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what teams off the top of my head that really would be viable for it, but listen, or just find a team that like maybe eat half the salary and to give them like a second round pick. And listen, if you're the Penguins and Bloomquist keeps playing like this, and let's say Nadalkovich plays a few games when he comes back, and he's eating it up too. He's playing great. I mean, Nadalkovich took over the net at the end of the year last he year. Was, he, he was great for that. Yeah. He was he was one of the reasons I saw the Malkin and Crosby on why that team was fighting for a playoff spot yep. late in the season. They got back into the race in mid-March. And I think if that happens where Nadalkovich plays great and you have Bloomquist playing great, like – 
do you you either a like you say you wave Jari and he goes to the minors because nobody's going to pick up that contract? I mm-hmm. highly doubt it. No, not um, with the way he's been playing. Exactly. Um, and two, or you say screw it, you waste the goddamn roster spot on a third goaltender, and you say, well, we'll play Jari here and there, and then we'll play Ndalkovich and Bloomquist. I most think of the, the, the most realistic option is just finding a team to eat the contract. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, even if they retain half the contract. I think that's still worth it for them. Like, I think this team could barely sneak into the playoffs if they have pretty decent goaltending. At least how they're playing up front right now. I mean, I they, they rely a lot on you know Crosby and Malkin still, and it's kind of scary. If they, they get subpar goaltending, like it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. And even if this team did make the playoffs, I don't see them doing anything past the first round. So I will say Crosby, Malkin, are reaching these milestones. I We're seeing greatness. Oh, we, we yeah. Already, we already see it with Ovi. We've, now we're seeing it with Crosby and Malkin, too. Like, you know, it is kind of bittersweet seeing like these legends like in the twilights of this career because, I mean, they've been in the NHL for like as long as I've been watching hockey. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it is kind of tough seeing these players get older. I mean, I'm glad they're still performing at a high level. But, you know, Malkin's 38, Crosby's 37. Like, realistically, maybe, you know, two, three years left for Malkin, three, four left for Crosby. So, like, we're getting pretty close to the end. And I'm, I'm glad they're still fun to watch. The Sid still looks like his old self. He's not as fast as he used to be. But mm-hmm. he's still quick. He can still score. He can still do everything in the ace. He still owns the Buffalo Sabres. So. Of course. I The passion from these two is un. Match. I mean, we saw it against Buffalo when when they went down four one. You they pan to the bench and Malkin screaming his ass off. And guess what? They come back when in overtime. Yeah, like, I mean, there was a good moment too in that game. I don't. Well, they, I think it was three to one. I don't think okay. it was four to one. Where uh, they scored a shorthanded goal to make a three and two. Like Crosby and Malkin are like hugging each other on the bench. Mm-hmm. Like they still care a lot about winning. So as I mean, they're playing like they still really have a good passion and. You know, Pittsburgh, it's a tough spot for Pittsburgh because, you know, you'd love to get those two guys one more cup. But it's just with the way the rest of the roster is built, I just don't see how that happens. They're, this roster isn't good enough to even kind of compete for a cup. And that's me being brutally honest. I would love, love to see Sid and Malkin have one last run at a cup. But I just think this roster isn't built for that. And that sucks. And like when we were talking, I don't think Eric Carls is a good fit for the Pittsburgh Penguins. No, he's not a great fit. They already had Latang. They they have Latang and Carlson, who are the two, same exact defensemen. I, 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 th- I thought Carlson, at least in the game against Buffalo, the part that I watched, he did not look very good. Did he? How, how did I don't watch a ton of that game? Did he, did he look like slow? Like he just I didn't mean, belong out there? Specifically, in the defensive zone, he wasn't looking very good. Like yeah, I mean, like he was getting beat to pucks a lot, taking bad angles. Just kind of looked out of it. Maybe it was just a bad game, but it could have been a bad game, or maybe he's just like low confidence. A little bit of both. Maybe this... I mean defense has never really been his strong suit. Yeah, but but I mean it looks bad. All right, so there's a couple teams that are struggling that we thought were actually going to be pretty decent. To be honest with you, the Predators and the Avalanche to be exact. The Avs came back against the Ducks last night. Well, I guess I wouldn't really call it a comeback. They're down by like one goal, whatever. Still come back. But yeah, that's yeah. true. And then the Predators were down two one going into the third, and then Steven Stamkos finally got it's his first goal. Three two Detroit right now. Three two. Okay, so it's three two Detroit now. Detroit took the lead back. Ten minutes in the left third. in the third. So, you know, Nashville as the time. We're, you guys are obviously going to know by the time we have this video uploaded. But Nashville, you know, right now for us recording is ten minutes away from being zero five. Told you guys. Yeah, I said Nashville wasn't going to be that good, and everybody laughed at me. So you still picked them to make the playoffs. Yeah, wild card team. I didn't say they were going to be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nashville, I, I don't think it's as surprising to me as they're off. To, I, I am kind of shocked they're winless. Yeah, but they, you know, you bring in two guys like Stamkos and March or so. There, there's going to be a little bit of a, some growing pains, you know, with a big roster overhaul like that. If they lose again to, like right now, I, I'm officially worried. 0 oh, and five. That's a horrible, horrible, horrible start. Are, are we really panicking? Like from zero to ten, zero, you're not panicked. Ten being panicking, like an eight. Like are we that are we, like, high go to, like, up? Seven or a six, maybe six and a half. I would love to be panicking a lot right now. Now, if they start off the season like they like, are they like an Oilers start the season? Then I'm panicking. Like last year with the Oilers. I mean, the Oilers, that was still insane that they turned that around. But, but they also have Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl. Nashville has a great team, too. They have Steven Stamkos. Yeah, they they have Philip Forsberg. 
but they don't have a twenty-eight year old, a hundred and fifty point. Yeah, I know. No, no, nobody really has. I that. know. I know. But I know. it was still miraculous that they turned it. It off. was pretty sick. And then you know, on Colorado's end, I was also very surprised with their start because I mean, you have Nathan McKinnon, and you know they have a stacked roster, and they just haven't really been able to put together a full game. You know, they did end up coming back last night. Nathan McKinnon put the team on his back in overtime. That was a sick goal. Now, it barely squeaked in, but it was so sick goal. You know, Colorado, I'm not so worried about. Compared to Nashville, really? Yeah. I'm on the exact opposite spectrum. I'm more worried about Colorado than Nashville. I know know Colorado won last night, and they have a win now in the books. But the reason I'm saying that is because Nashville, sure. I'm not as high in them. Nashville as hasn't been scoring though. Like, just yeah. looking through the standings through four games, they have eight goals. But the Georgiev and whoever else their backup is can't keep the puck out of the net. Like, sure, they have Kokkinen who's coming back to Denver. They have uh, Nachuskin who just got back into Denver today, and he'll be back after possibly back after 16 game suspension. It could be um, extended if the NHL chooses to do so. Um, but so, like. On a scale of 0 to 10, I think Colorado, I'm on a 7. I think Nashville, I'm on a 5. I do think that if Nashville, like, doesn't come back to beat Detroit or at least get one point, my, I go to, like, a 5.5 on Nashville. Colorado, sure, like, I can see why you're not worried because I mean, McKinnon, I think you should be. Rantanen. If you're an Avalanche fan, you're definitely a little worried. Like, I'm not – they're not just sitting there relaxed. They're still 1 and 4. Still a really bad start to the year. I mean, there's still like 75. On a scale from like 1 to 10 for Colorado, I'm probably like a 4, 4.5. Okay. I mean. Because, you know, Colorado, they have, they've proven that they can overcome stuff like this. You know, they haven't really had a great goalie in the Nathan McKinnon era. Um, you know, the best goalie they probably had the last few years was Darcy Kemper when they won the Cup. You know, they're, they'll be a playoff team still. I don't know. At this point, if I feel confident in them having a chance to win the division. I will say, well, I don't think they're going to win the division. I never thought they were going to. I always thought it was Dallas. I thought they'd be in the conversation. I thought that they maybe be there. Because last year was a dogfight. I thought Winnipeg and Dallas were going to be easily one and two, and then there would be a gap between Colorado. You you forgot about Winnipeg when you were making your playoff picks. Yeah, but here we are. I made my official ones. That was like in July, okay? I think you had – didn't you have Winnipeg as a wild card team? No, I, I had them second. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I think the Central Division, honestly, Dallas is to lose. Oh, yeah. I mean, all right, if we look at the Central Division like this, it, I think it's Dallas is to lose for sure. But if Winnipeg is fighting with them, like, come later in the season, I really would not be shocked at all. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, last year, it came down to the last week of the season to find out who was going to win the like, division. It was a dogfight last year between the Jets the Stars and the Avalanche. And then the Jets went, just not the Jets, the Stars kind of went on a little bit of a run towards the end of the season to finally get it, missed the President's Trophy by a point. But I will say, though, before we move on, I I think Colorado needs to get a goalie. Like, oh, it, this, this, yeah. Well, this isn't this isn't like, oh, we can ride it out with Georgia. Like, how, I think they need to make a move for a goalie. Like, this is, I think I'm pressing a panic button on Georgiev. We saw last season in the playoffs sure, against Winnipeg, he allowed six goals in game one. It was stellar the rest of the round. But I think this is a different situation. I do think that there needs to be some type of change. Now, we are only five games into the season, so I won't be like, Georgiev needs to like be benched type of thing. He's still their best goalie on the roster. But I yeah. mean, at the same time, though, it's like, Georgiev, I don't trust him if I'm the avalanche. Oh, I don't think they do trust him. That's why they try to score a lot of goals. But you can I mean, they have do that to. when you have Nathan McKinnon and you know Miko Ratton and Casey Milstad has like four or five goals already this year. Yeah, Kale McCarr, like they've they have a good enough roster, I think, to overcome the goaltending issues. All right, I want to move on. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. So, so for some context for people that haven't watched all of our episodes or haven't watched some recently, Zach is a professional hater of the Calgary Flames. He picked them to be the worst team in the league this year. Yes, sir. Uh, they are 4-0. and They and will be 4-76. 4-78. <laughs> or 4-78, four, excuse me. Sorry, my math. My math was off. <laughs> no, they won't. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised. I didn't think the Flames were – I'm not high in the Flames either. 
I didn't think we were. Did really... you say the Ducks are going to be the worst team in the league? No, I said the Blue Jackets. Oh, sorry, the, the Ducks were a bottom three team. Yes. We both have bad takes right now. I don't Actually, know. my take isn't that bad. The Flames are still the worst team in the league. They're four and zero, man. <laughs> Listen, Jonathan Huberdeau's back. Huberdeau's back. Is he back though? Is he back to 110 point pace? I mean, right now he's at a, about a 95 point pace. It's not 110. Well, I, I, I will say though, we, if he had 95 points this year, that would be a that would be considered a be, big bounce. He had 52 points last that year. That will be a big bounce back. He'd be doubling, almost doubling his he's points. He's never going to have 115 points again. That was oh. his career year. Oh, for sure. I mean, he was playing with Matt Dukachuk, Sam if, Reinhart. If he's a point-per-game player this year, I think Flames fans are very happy. I would be happy if I was them, too. I would also be happier if we were last, if the Flames were last place. <laughs> I'm not even... No, 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 no. You think I'm... This is not me trying, okay? Because hear me out. If the Flames legitimately get the first overall pick, you get James Hagen, you, you need... Young, you need like more youth. I get. I love Connor Zari. He's a great stud. I love Wolf. He's a stud. Huberto is having a great bounce back. Kadri's having a great bounce back. I love Uyghur Anderson. You guys get the point. But if you guys get the first overall pick, you get James Higgins. Who um, you know he's not guaranteed to come into the NHL next season. But I mean, listen. If you see some improvement from Huberto and Kadri, and the contracts don't look as bad as they have the last two seasons like i'll be okay now if if i'm calgary i think worst case scenario you get 84 points i calgary think calgary is mid they're not dumpster fire trash they are a mid team they're not a dumpster fire but i think that this 4-0 start is going to oh they're definitely not like they're overperforming right now what if this i'm just is... giving you shit because you i mean i didn't think they'd be 4-0 either but you definitely didn't think they'd be 4-0 <laughs> thought they'd be home for yeah I will say, what if Calgary fucks around and just decides, hey, let's let's make the playoffs, <laughs> dude? Why why do you like go back and forth? I'm so not much? going. No, I'm not going back and forth. I still have them as the worst team in the league. But I'm saying, like, what if they just screw around? Like, now I again, like I said, like they're gonna be the worst team in the league. No, dude, I'm, not back, they're not no the I'm not hating. They're not. No, I'm not backing league. down. They're not the worst team in the if league. The, I, I remember I did say if they aren't the worst team in the league, they'll be the second worst team in the league behind Columbus. Columbus looks a lot better than I thought they'd be. Honestly, kind of same. I think that the whole start of the year, I think with the, they had a very good Johnny Gaudreau mm-hmm. tribute, very touching. It was hard to make it through that whole thing, honestly. It was yeah. very emotional. But they, I mean, they're 2-2 two and two to start the year, which is better than I thought they'd be. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought... They'd have a pretty slow start to the season, especially you know trying to overcome the loss of Johnny Gaudreau. But they, they've looked better than I thought. You know, San Jose looks pretty bad still. Yeah, they still have, is have Celebrini defense. back from my area? I'm not sure. I don't think he is. Yeah, I would have heard something. I will say Columbus does look all right. They. At least the game that I watched them against Buffalo, they look good. Now I get this Sabers, so but the at Sabers the, make everybody look good. That is fair, but I mean at the same time though, like I didn't expect Columbus to come out and have this much energy. Now I get you're playing for Johnny, and I love that. Um, but again, like you watch them night in and night out, whenever they play, like they have some uh, like a jump to them. You know, yeah. like I like to see that Columbus looks all right. Um, I mean, this could listen. This is what I was talking about in the last episode. Like, sure, you have some teams here and there, like Anaheim and San Jose, and maybe even Chicago. That I don't think is going to be great. Um, but I don't expect Columbus to stay at five hundred. I don't expect Calgary. No, to be. I think I think right now what we're seeing with Columbus is they're they're kind of riding that emotion. You know, of, you know, starting the year. You know, I'm sure almost every away game they're going to go to, they're probably going to have a moment of silence for Johnny mm-hmm. Gaudreau. I think it's going to get to a point where the teams the teams just kind of go like do we get to keep doing this? Right. Like and that's not being disrespectful at all. It's just they've had to deal with it more than anybody like else. Like emotionally drained. And I I know that the other teams in the league are just trying to be respectful, but at some point I feel like the players just like like yeah, we know he's gone. It sucks, but I, do we have to go through this every game? Yeah. I mean, who knows? I I don't know. I know like they have Johnny's locker up for the entire season, which is sick. Um, I know like like how would players react to that? Seeing like damn, like like the almost denial hit them. 
Um, I, honestly, I, I think they're fu- it's fueling them right now. I think they're playing hard for Johnny. I mean, I I, I respect it. I like it a lot. Um, I think Columbus will. I think they they might surprise some people this season. I mean, they're still on a playoff team. No, oh, they're not close. But no. yeah, though they they they're better than I thought they'd be. Calgary is not a like the worst team in the league. Get off the get off the hate train. <laughs> generational flames hater apparently. Yeah, you are a generational yeah. flames hater. Like I said when I was bringing up the topic, you are a professional Calgary Flames hater. So like when he's at work, like you know when he has downtime, he's just you know on, online. He has a Flames hater Twitter account. Maybe I should make a Flames hater burner now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, before we move on, Ken Johnson is out long term for the Blue Jackets. Going That's back to rough. that. That's yeah. rough. That's rough. It, it sucks. So it's an upper body injury. I don't know what part of it. It's not being disclosed, obviously, because why would it be in the fucking NHL? Um, but we're moving on here to our way too early MVP race. So there have been some players that have had pretty great starts to the year. One I want to highlight in particular is Mr. Jack Eichel, who I think has been phenomenal to start. Right the now, year. he's my hard favorite. Yeah, he's been great to start the year. So he has ten points so far in in five games: two goals, eight assists. Uh, you know, with Vegas, you know, obviously losing guys like Marcia So, you know, Stevenson, they needed him to step up. And he's stepping up in a huge way. The entire line's playing great. Mark Stone's Mark's- playing great. Barbashev is playing really good. You know, if they keep this up, Vegas will, you know, be a, a bona fide playoff team. Like, it won't be like them fighting for a wild card spot. This like, is- they will be in contention to win their division. This is the best version of Jack Eichel we've seen in Vegas, <laughs> I think. And I also do think this is the best version of Eichel we've had since the 2019 20 season. I think this might be the best version of Eichel we've ever seen. I think. He's very comfortable where he is. I think he's a thousand percent recovered from that injury. I think he's very confident. He's very happy, and he's just going out there and playing his game. It looks like he no fell distraction, in love with the game again. No distractions. He's just out there playing hockey at the highest level he can. I love it. I mean, I love it. Like I, I've honestly kind of liked Jack Eichel again. Seeing him just go out there and play the sport he loves. Like he's falling in love with the sport again, and I love to see that. Like he's just going out there and playing and. He's he's coming up on his contract soon. He's gonna get paid. I mean, Vegas again. is gonna take care of him. Oh yeah, I mean, this is one player. Like I know Vegas is known to kind of do their players dirty. Eichel's I feel like is the Eichel, one player they're no, not, Eichel, they're not they're gonna not let go. They're, they're gonna sign him to an eight-year oh, extension oh. as soon as they can. And I, I believe he wants to stay there. So. Oh, I mean, I don't blame him. You get to party all day long in Vegas and also play for a really good hockey team too. That also kind of matters. And <laughs> yeah, I don't know if the the party <laughs> thing is a, a big factor. You know, he's getting older now. So. Yeah. Getting close to that age of thirty. Yeah, so maybe less. I can't the party. believe he's already him and McDavid are already twenty eight. I mean, next year that draft was ten years ago. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, it, time flies, man. It's nuts. Yeah, no, it was crazy. But uh, Jack Eichel's had a very great start to the season. So has, we already highlighted Evgeny Malkin a little bit. Does he keep this up? I don't know. I but. I don't know if he keeps this exact pace up, but I do think that he can be over a point per game. And listen. This might be a case where the Penguins somehow sneak in and Malkin and Crosby are sitting there at 85, 90 plus points. Like, who knows what can happen? Um, another def- guy I want to highlight, too, is another former Sabre, Mr. Sam Reinhart of the Florida Panthers. Yes, sir. Out here looking to prove that last year was not a fluke year for him. And he's been playing really, really well in the absence of Barkov and Matthew Kachuk. Uh, nine points so far this season. He has four goals, five assists six games so he's looking like a stud you were about to see another 40 goal season from reinhardt aren't we uh it wouldn't surprise me i don't know if he'll get like you know 50 again. no I, 57 but listen i don't think 57 he'll get but i mean he'll be between 40 to 45 i w- wouldn't know i i don't know if he'll do 50 i'm gonna say 40 to play it safe i don't know but i've been very impressed with you know him kind of you know putting the some more of the load on himself. He was losing Barkov. You know, should be back in a couple of weeks. Kachuk's sick, right? Yeah, Kachuk be, will be back soon. I mean, he must be pretty sick to miss this many games. Yeah, but you know, they'll be they'll be back. But I think that only helps Reinhardt get even better. Oh man, when Barkov comes back in a couple of weeks, and then you have Kachuk coming back within the next week or so, hopefully, 
it's going to be back to the Panthers being an absolute juggernaut. And also, Artemi Panarin, too. He's having a hell of a season. He has 11 points right I mean, now. Yeah, he, he had a career year last year, and it's looking like he might surpass last season. Uh, you know, he had 120 points last year so far in, you know, four games. He has 11 points. Five that goals. is crazy. In four games, yeah, 11 five points. Five goals, six assists. So he's, he's having a really good start to the year, too. I'm just saying, okay, I don't want to do any narratives here, but he's on pace for 225 points. So I, just wanna, I, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> if he has 225 points, he, he'll probably, I, I'm confident saying he'll be MVP. <laughs> you have a good point. I'm confident saying the Rangers honestly might have 140 points. Anyway, if, if he scores 226 goals, how many games are they going to lose? Like, if he has that many points, they're, they're going to be scoring at an absurd rate. At least two <laughs> or three goals a game. The Rangers? If he has 226 points. They'll be scoring way more than two or three game, goals a game. But I'm just saying, just like, let's just say Panarin is the factor in every single goal they score. That's at least two or three goals oh, a yeah, game. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right, right, you're right, okay. Panarin's having a hell of a season. Yes, he has. Um, you know, I think those are really three strong front runners. You know, McDavid's off to a, a pretty slow start with the Oilers. I mean, the Oilers are off to a pretty slow start. I'm sure McDavid will pick it up. Not really. I mean, they won their him. last two games. I think they have a game tonight as well. Um, actually, they're playing the Stars right now. That's right. Um, I wonder. I wonder if there's. Hold on. I'm going to check to see the score of the game. Not that it's really relevant that much. It's still three two Red Wings Predators right now. Red How Wings much time left in the game. Uh, two oh nine left. Uh, looks like the Predators pulled their goalie. And okay. then first intermission zero zero Oilers Stars eleven to two shots on goal in favor of Edmonton. They go into the second period with the power play. Yeah, Edmonton, that was another team that had a bit slow start to the season. I'm not worried about I'm, that. I'm not remotely worried, especially after the 0 3 start. They win two straight games, and they're, it looks like they're dominating Dallas right now. So, I mean, I mean first period, anything can happen. I mean, yeah, but they're probably going to score a power play goal here. Mark it right now. Just saying. Yeah, I mean, they have a pretty good power um, play. Okay, so early surprises this season. So uh, one team I want to highlight um, that I've been a little bit surprised by for uh, one specific reason is the Seattle Kraken, and they can score now. They have cracked the code. So that was the main issue for them last year was scoring. So, you know, start the season, uh, first goal game, they lost 5-4 to four in a shootout. Four goals, though. It's a good night. They get shut out by Dallas. Not the end of the world. Oh, well. Dallas is one of the best teams in the league, one of the best goalies in the league. Win in Nashville seven to three, beats Philadelphia six to four. So there, that was a big issue for them last year. Is they could not score. They go out in free agency, you know, sign Chandler Stevenson, bring in Brandon Montour to help address that scoring. Jerry McCann has been on a, a he's been on a burner to start the year too. Yes, he's sir. Looking great. You know, he's my fantasy sleeper every year. He's always, like, a good stud for me. I can get late in the fantasy draft. You guys play fantasy hockey. If Jeremy McCann's available in your league, go pick him up. He's a great under-the-radar player that I don't think gets, an, I don't think gets a lot of love. So I'm looking up a certain player right now. Matty Benier says no goals, one assist, one point. But he is a plus one in five games. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean he's off to a little bit of a slow start. But at the same time, though, I think he's being asked a little bit more to – Play more of a two-way game. It's bad. They just gave him a big contract, so. I mean, what? They gave him an eight, what is it, $7 million? $8 million? Something like that? Yeah, Jeremy McCann to start the year, three goals, four assists. So. Jeremy McCann is playing great, I yeah. will say. I think, I believe Seattle was our sleeper team this season, too. If I'm not, I think. Was my sleeper team? I, I, I Probably. Think. I'm high. I'm pretty high on Seattle. I think they had a good offseason. Um, you know, they have a good, 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 good young players. You know, Shane Wright, goal and assist this year to start this year. I think he'll be good. He'll continue to develop. You know, but uh, uh, Seattle, I think, is a team that could do some damage if they can, can keep up. This. That was their biggest issue, like I said last year, is they couldn't score. They'd be in close games, just they, they couldn't get the scoring when they needed it to. I will say, if a team like Vegas, L.A., or Vancouver would falter, we thought that Seattle was possibly going to be able to sneak in there. And right now, Vancouver's faltering. Yeah, I mean, they're I mean, dealing granted, with, it's early, but yeah. I mean, this is all be like I don't know what's going on with Vancouver. Pedersen has one even strength goal since March 25th or 26th, dating back to last season, and that's something to worry about. I am a little bit surprised about uh, Vancouver in that aspect, not in a good way. I'm obviously surprised about Calgary a lot. I think they look good, like all by society. Me hating like Calgary looks good. Early leaders in the Pacific Division: Calgary, Vegas, and Seattle. Just what we all had written down, right? 
Yes. Now, mind you, no team has played more than seven games at this point, so it's still extremely, extremely, you know extremely what I'm excited early for? in the year. If anybody's still like listening or watching this, whatever, and they're like, they've already typed out a comment. Oh, we're only a week and a half into the season. Yes, chill. we know. We know. This is a hypothetical, people. Holy shit. Um, so who's winning a Vegas Seattle first round playoff series? I'm going to go Seattle in four games. You know, playoffs end today. <laughs> Did the you playoffs th- start today? These are the matchups. You know, we got New York, <laughs> Pittsburgh, Toronto, Tampa, Field, Florida. Ottawa's a playoff team right now. Like, can you, let's just end the season now. Ottawa, especially Ottawa. Ottawa's like, all right, rebuild. Ottawa over. looks pretty good too. They look great. They yeah. beat Tampa today too. Yeah. I mean, look at the goaltending. We talked a little bit about it last week. All they needed was a goaltender, and people are like, oh, the team in front of Corpus Allo played that bad. Maybe it was because <coughs> that team didn't have confidence in front of their goaltending, so they pr- they were pressing more. Now they trust No, Omar, they did need not- to clean up things in front of like, uh, yeah, I know, they, they, but like defensively as a whole. So, I mean, having the better goalie does make a difference, yes. but they did need to clean up their play. They didn't, I'm, not, I'm not giving a pass to Ottawa and how they played <laughs> last season. Maybe it could be another year of maturity, too. Maybe it's just the head coach as well. Like It could be a little bit mixture of both, but Ottawa looks great. I will say that we do have a final five to Detroit wins. So Nashville moves uh, 0-5. Oh, yeah. 0-5. five. Oh, five. Holy I, shit! I my grammar I think the sucks. panic meter might have just gone up a half a just, percentage. Just a little bit. I think it might be up to a seven now. Just, yeah, just a little bit. I'm yeah. a little bit panicked if I'm Nashville. Off season I mean, champs. I mean, are they the New York Jets of the NHL right now? Uh, well, to be honest, I don't. All in and then can't still still can't win. Maybe, maybe no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they feel like kind of. Sounds like Nashville needs a canceled trip to Vegas sphere moment right coming up. They need to get their stuff together. I don't know what's going on with Nashville. I really don't. I, I like obviously they can't score. They lost five two today. Like they well two empty net goals. Yeah, Simon Edmondson with one for fantasy hockey. By the way, people. Um. Yeah. I. I don't know. All right. So, do you want to do the fantasy draft now? Sure. Let's do it. Sweet. All right. Oh, so, but what, did, was there any teams that are surprising you? I. I kind of highlighted Seattle. You didn't really name one. Um. If you don't have one. It's fine. We can just edit this part out then. Yeah. Ca- you know, yeah. I kind. I. I am really surprised about Calgary. Like genuinely. Like I'm not even like hating. Like <laughs> I'm surprised. Like I'm. Zach being honest about the Calgary Flames. Who is that's this guy? That's a first. That's who a first. Who is this guy? I. So we covered Calgary a little bit. I know it's kind of a boring pick. I, we don't have to go over them again. But um, I don't think it is a boring pick because I mean I think they're surprising everybody right now. I yeah. can't imagine there's many people that thought like they like, good, look at this good to start the year. No, is this sustainable? Probably not. And They'll listen, fall back down to earth. But I will be happy for the Flames though to get a bounce back season from them. Genuinely, like I'll put my ego and pride aside if Calgary plays good this season. I'll, I'm rooting for you guys, deep down. So moving on here to our weekly fantasy draft. Last week you won forty to thirty four. Um, the deciding factor is Connor Hellebuck with two wins and. Sorokin with only one win and one loss. Hellbuck went 2-0. That was, you know. Neil Pionk went crazy for you. Brock Nelson went crazy for you. Neil Pionk, my goat. He got carried by legitimately three guys. I know Puck. Okay, buddy. Um, all right. So, you're 1-0 this season. I'm 0-1. Um, I get my get back, though, as we do. A first spin, you guys are going to have it up on screen here as we have... The St. Louis Blues is the first team. That's an intriguing one. Okay, I really don't know the roster very well, so. And be fun. the second one are the Los Angeles Kings. That is the most boring two teams that we possibly could have had. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So. Well, I think I did. You have the first pick last week, or did I? Oh, uh, you did. So no, you no, know. I had the first pick because we did Snake. Okay, I think we should just do. Every other you want to go every other? Yeah, okay, all right. Then I'll go first because I lost last week. Do you want to do it that way then? Whoever loses the previous sure. week goes first? All right, sweet. All right, so let me bring up the... Actually, you know, I don't even need to... I'm going Kirill Kaprizov. What? Why didn't you get the wild? Oh, that's right. I'm thinking about the wild. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to go Robert Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so caught off guard by that, though. I was like, I'm going to go Kirill Kaprizov. I was, I was thinking like, of Kirill. Do you know about a trade that <laughs> yeah. occurred or something? <laughs> That's that's hilarious. Okay, uh, I'm going to go with Quentin Byfield. I like that pick. I like that pick. Um hmm. I'm bringing let's see. Ooh, what if I go what are we looking like here? I'm going to go Adrian Kempe. Okay, I'm going to go Jordan Kiryu. 
All right. So I'm going to write down. Are you ready? Do you want me to write down yours? Sure. Okay. So I have Kempi and then um, Thomas. And then you have Kairu. And Byfield. All right. Sweet. Byfield, Kairu. All right. So, damn. I really like Byfield. I mean, uh, Kairu a lot. We're going to no go. Uh, I think Robert Thomas is a tad better. Um, well, I'm saying with your second pick, I'm surprised oh. you didn't pick him. So we're going to go Pavel Butznevich. Okie dokie. I'm going to grab uh, the first defenseman here, Colton Pareko. Okay, I like that. All right. I think this might be the most important position out of them all. Mm-hmm. We're going to go with Jordan Bennington a little bit early. Okay. Well, we only get one goalie, so I might as well wait till the end. And the pick yeah, nine. go for it. Uh, Anze Kopitar. Okay. That's an all right pick. What? Yeah, just all right. Yeah, just a <laughs> Hall of Fame player. <laughs> um, I do need a couple of defensemen. What are we looking like here? Hmm. You're probably added up the downtime between our picks. Um, ooh, I'm gonna go Mikey Anderson. Interesting. Going back to the Kings, I'm gonna pick up Trevor Moore. Honestly, Moore is a very underrated player. Yes, I like that is. pick a lot. So I need a couple more forwards here. Uh, we're gonna go Kevin Fiala. Respectable pick. <laughs> Three, four, five, six. All right, I need two more forwards and a D man. I'm gonna grab uh the vet Braden Shen. Braden Shen, okay. So uh we both need two forwards and a D man then. Oh right, no, you need a goalie. Yeah, that's I need right. A defenseman. Um hmm. I need a goal four defenseman and a goalie. Let's see. I really like Jordan Spence a lot. I don't know if I'm gonna go him though. Ooh, I don't know if I wanna do Broberg. We're going to go, uh, that's a Gavrikov, no. Um, you know what? Screw it. I'm going Brand Clark. We're taking a, we're taking a swing for the fences here. Well, I'm, I'm going to take Gavrikov then. Okay. That's what I would pick. All right. Forward. Um, I think there's might be only, I love Jake Neighbors. I love him, but we're going to go Philip Deneau. We're going with the defensive forward. Yes, sir. He'll be all right. He'll get a couple goals. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. I need one more forward. Hmm. Give me Brandon Saad. Brandon Saad. And then I'm going to end up going Jake Neighbors anyways here. And then my last pick I'm taking is Arzy Kemper. Just all right. Goalie. So, the recap teams. So, we have that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To edit. Um, uh, let's see. So, we're going to go. Hold on. I'm going to. I missed one player with your team. Um, you want to read him through? To no. Me? I have, so, I have. For your team, I've bought. So, for Preston's team, I have down Byfield, Kairu, Pareko, Kopitar. Moore, Shen, Gavrikov, and Kemper. Do you get Kopitar? Yeah, I do have him. Um, I feel like it's a Blues play. Oh, I forgot Saad. That's who it is. I forgot Saad. Okay. And then my team is going to be Kempe, Thomas, Buchnevich, Bennington, Anderson, Fiala, Clark, Philip Deneau, and Jake Neighbors. All right. Best of luck to you. I'm getting my get back this week. Just want to point that out. I'm already 2-0, so. Excuse me? Okay. (laughs) You heard Um, me. Anyways, so that's going to end it for today's episode. All of our socials are down below as well as the subscribe button. Thank you guys for being here as always. And if you guys are on Apple and Spotify, head over to our YouTube, Instagram, and Discord are down below. Go check us out there. We'll see you guys in our next episode.